In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can evaluate a function at an expression. We've already seen us putting numbers into, into a function, just replacing the variable with what it represents. Well, we can do the same thing with expressions. As we do, we need to remember when replacing a variable, we always use parentheses. And then, we remember that whatever is inside of the function always replaces the variables. This time, it's just going to be an expression instead of a, f instead of a number. So in our first example, we know f of x is equal to the square root of 2x plus 3x, and we're asked to find f of 8x squared. Notice what is inside the parentheses is 8x squared. That is going to be what replaces both of the variables in the expression. Now, it's tricky here because they both have x's, and people sometimes get thrown off by that. Rather than thinking about that as an x in the expression, we're just going to say this is the square root of 2 times stuff plus 3 times stuff, and the stuff is whatever's inside the function. So we would have the square root of 2 times stuff, plus 3 times stuff. What stuff's going in there? 8x squared is going in for both of them, because whatever is inside the function goes inside the variables, replaces the variables, if you will. Now, all we have to do is simplify what's left. We can do some multiplication giving us the square root of 2 times 8 is 16x squared, plus 3 times 8 is 24x squared. We can simplify the square root, because the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of x squared is just x. So we have 4x plus 24x squared. Can't do any more simplifying. That's our final solution, putting the expression inside the function. Let's take a look at another example. In example 2, we're asked to if p of n equals n squared minus 2n plus 5, and we're asked to find p of n minus 3. Again, what's inside the function is the n minus 3. So that's what's going to go in for both of the variables. We'll think about it as stuff squared minus 2 times stuff, plus 5, and that stuff is whatever's inside the function. So stuff squared, minus 2 times stuff, plus 5, and that stuff is the n minus 3 inside the function. So we have n minus 3 squared, minus 2 times n minus 3, plus 5. Now, we just have to simplify this expression. Be careful when squaring. Remember, we square the first, and then we have the product, negative 3n twice. Negative 3n is negative 6n, and then we can square the last term. 3 squared is 9. Let's go ahead and distribute also while we're at it. Minus 2n plus 6 plus 5. And then we just have to combine like terms. There's just an n squared. Minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8n. And 9 plus 6 plus 5 is plus 20. And we've now plugged that expression, n minus 3, into the function. Visually, what we're looking at then, using the function machine to kind of get an idea of what we're going for, this is Whoops. This is the f of x function machine. And what we put into the function was the 8x squared. We put 8x squared as a group in parentheses into the function. In the first example, what came out was the 4x plus 24x squared. So you put an expression in, you get an expression out. Similarly, with the other function machine from example 2, this one's p of n. 
we took what was inside the function, the n minus 3, that's inside the function. So we put the n minus 3 as a group into the function, and what came out was n squared minus 8n plus 20. That's what we're doing as we evaluate an expression inside a function, replacing the variable with what is inside the function.